In this lecture and in next few lectures, we are going to learn about how JavaScript programs are executed behind the scenes. And this is a very important concept to learn about and every modern JavaScript developer should be aware of how JavaScript program works behind the scenes. Let's start by understanding what is JavaScript runtime and how browsers act as a JavaScript runtime. Remember that what we are going to learn now is a very important concept and I will use this concept to explain many other JavaScript related topics in the future in this course. Now, a JavaScript runtime is basically an environment which provides all the necessary components in order to use and run JavaScript program. These runtime environments can be slightly different when we use JavaScript in browser and when we use it in a server side language using Node.js. However, the basic structure of the runtime environment remains same. A JavaScript runtime in case of browser consists of four main components which forms a complete runtime environment. And these are JavaScript engine, web API, callback queue and microtask queue and event loop. And you can see them in this diagram. So let's talk about each of these components one by one. And let's start with JavaScript engine. So the heart of any JavaScript runtime is always a JavaScript engine. Without a JavaScript engine, there is no way to run and execute JavaScript code whether you are using it in the browser or in the Node.js environment. So a JavaScript engine is simply a computer program which executes JavaScript code. However, there are a lot of steps involved in executing a JavaScript program by the JavaScript engine. But essentially, executing JavaScript code is what a JavaScript engine does. The main job of JavaScript engine is to execute JavaScript code. Now, every browser has its own JavaScript engine. For example, V8 is the JavaScript engine for Google Chrome. SpiderMonkey is the JavaScript engine for Firefox and JavaScript Co is the JavaScript engine for Safari. But probably the most well-known engine is Google's V8. The V8 engine powers Google Chrome and it is also the JavaScript engine used in Node.js for executing JavaScript code. Now, any JavaScript engine will always have a stack and a heap memory. As we have learned in our previous lectures, the primitive type values are stored and executed in the stack memory and object types are stored and executed in the heap memory. So in the stack memory, the function and other codes are executed one after the other and they form something called as call stack. The call stack is where JavaScript code gets executed using something called as execution context and we are going to talk about call stack and execution context in great detail in our coming lectures. Then heap is an unstructured memory pool which stores all the objects that a JavaScript application needs. The heap memory is used for dynamic allocation of memory. It grows dynamically as needed during program execution. So for example, let's say we are creating an array in our JavaScript code. Let's say that array has three elements. So since an array is of reference type, it will be stored in the heap memory. Now later, if we add more elements to that array, then we will need more memory to store that array, right? So that's why the reference types are stored in heap memory because heap memory can grow dynamically based on your program needs. We will learn about stack and heap memory also in great detail in our coming lectures. Now, the JavaScript engine alone is not enough for creating an entire runtime. In order to work properly and provide extra functionality, we also need some APIs. When we use browser as a JavaScript runtime, it provides us web APIs. A web API provided by the browser contains everything related to DOM, timers, other APIs, and even the console.log function, which we use all the time. The web API is provided by browsers. Essentially, Web APIs provides extra functionality to the JavaScript engine, which are not part of JavaScript language itself. JavaScript simply gets access to these APIs through the global window object. For example, the getElementById method and the querySelector method, which we used in our previous section, that is provided by Web API. And those functions are called as DOM APIs. In the same way, browser also provides timer functions like set timeout and set interval. Then it also provides the console.log function, which we have been using so far. 
and it also provides another API called fetch API which we use to make HTTP requests to the server from the browser from our JavaScript code so this fetch API that is also provided by web API of the browser so web API is also part of JavaScript runtime and it provides extra functionality to JavaScript like working with DOM elements, timer functions, etc. Then a typical JavaScript engine also includes a so-called callback queue and microtask queue. The callback queue and microtask queue are the data structures that contains all the callback functions from an event or from a promise which are ready to be executed. So for example, when we attach event handler function for an event to a DOM element, those event handler functions are basically callback functions. And these callback functions does not get executed immediately as soon as the event happens. Instead, when the event happens, the callback functions attached to that events are pushed to the callback queue where they wait for their execution. They does not get executed immediately. Okay. In the same way, a microtask queue is very similar to callback queue. In the microtask queue also, a callback function waits for its execution. The only difference is that in the microtask queue, the callback functions attached to a promise waits inside the microtask queue. And the callback functions waiting inside the microtask queue has higher priority than the callback functions waiting inside the callback queue. Now, we are going to understand microtask queue and callback queue in great detail in our coming lectures and in one of the future lectures, we will also understand the difference between microtask queue and callback queue. For now, you just need to understand that in the callback queue, we store the callback functions which is passed as an event handler function for an event. And in the microtask queue, we store special callback functions, the callback functions which we use for a promise. Finally, we also have an event loop in JavaScript. Always remember that JavaScript is a single threaded programming language. It executes the JavaScript code one after the other. And once all the JavaScript code is executed by the single thread and when it is empty, the job of event loop is to push the callback function from the callback queue and microtask queue to the main thread for their execution. So as we learned, in the callback queue and microtask queue, we store the callback functions from events and promises. And these callback functions wait for their execution in the callback queue and microtask queue. Now, once the main thread is empty, the job of event loop is to push these callback functions from the callback queue and microtask queue one by one to the main thread where these callback function will get executed. So the event loop performs two jobs. The first job of event loop is to continuously monitor when the main thread will be empty. And as soon as the main thread is empty, the second job of event loop is to push callback functions from the callback queue and microtask queue to the main thread for their execution. And again, we will learn about event loop in great detail in one of the lectures of this section. So these are the four main components of JavaScript runtime when we use JavaScript in browser, the JavaScript engine, web API, microtask queue and callback queue and event loop. So this is a very high level overview of what JavaScript runtime is and how JavaScript runtime environment looks like for a browser. Now remember that JavaScript can also exist outside of the browser and we can also execute JavaScript code outside of the browser environment. For example, we can use Node.js which is also a runtime for executing JavaScript code on server side. Now, in case of Node.js environment, since there we are not using any browser, we will not have this web API. Instead, there the Node.js environment provides its own libraries and we call it as Node.js built-in modules. So Node.js runtime provides those built-in modules. For example, the FS module for working with file system, the HTTP module, the path module, and in Node.js environment also, we have a console.log function, which we can use for logging something in the console where our JavaScript code is running. So this console.log, we don't use it for logging something in the browser console. Instead, we use console.log statement, the console.log function of Node.js for logging something where the JavaScript code is running. 
Then, when we use Node.js for running JavaScript code, they are also we need JavaScript engine. Because as we learned, JavaScript engine is the one which executes JavaScript code. So in Node.js environment also, we use JavaScript engine for running JavaScript code. And there, we use Google Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. And finally, Node.js also has something called as thread pools. These thread pools are used by Node.js environment for running some of the JavaScript code asynchronously. Okay. Now, we will not go into the details of Node.js runtime environment here as it is out of the scope of this course. But I just wanted to show you that different JavaScript runtime environments also exist. And we can run JavaScript outside of the browser environment. All right. So this was a very high level overview of what JavaScript runtime is and what it consists of when we use browser as our JavaScript runtime. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.